Hello, 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 everyone. Lazi, you like that I switched over to uh, your pirate music? Just for you, Lazi, just for you. <laughs> we have Lazi first in chat, and Ariane and Tyler. Hello, hello. And let's see, Kenny. Hi, Kenny. And Sherry. You can't find me on Etsy, Sherry? Here. Exclamation point, Etsy. There you go. It's usually under Emily Illustrator, so it's like etsy.com slash shop slash Emily Illustrator shop or something. Anyway, that's the link there. Hi, Angela. Well, I'm so glad you're here. I hope you enjoy yourself. Well, so we are starting a new page today. That is this page right here. This is my dragonfly pay or not dragonfly. Haha. -ha. I can't talk. Yellow jacket. She's actually like supposed to be a queen yellow jacket. Hi, Samantha. You can find this in my Etsy store. I got the link right there. But if for some reason you just showed up and you can't see it, hi, Tara. You can also, also type exclamation point Etsy and that'll take you to my store there. Speaking of my store, if you've been around my Instagram, then you might have seen that little dance in my living room. Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> You might have seen that we finally got in our hollow octopus stickers. I was so glad here. Let me see if I can get it in focus here. There we go. I was so thrilled they showed up today. So here you can tilt it. You can see the hollow on the blue. Let's turn this up a little bit. There we go. The hollow on the blue. It's super cool and I'm totally in love. Not a big fan of yellow jackets. Okay, so I found my reference photo um, from way back when, from when I drew this picture. So uh, I'll, I'll give her a warning, but I thought I'd pop it up in case anybody was curious about where the picture came from. So the story behind this little lady here is uh, we live in, in Texas and mosquitoes are just awful, awful, awful down here. And so on our um, balcony, we have some mosquito netting up uh, so that we don't get eaten alive come evening. A uh, bunch of mosquitoes are getting in the house and it's just like, ah, because we have a water source where we live and everything. So it's just, it's monstrous. Anyway, the point is we have mosquito netting up and she got trapped on the inside. Uh, and so I was able to get some pictures. We ended up, you know, releasing her back out, you know, took her on this side, but not before I snapped a couple pictures. So I'll warn before I turn it up. I'll wait a little bit, unless everybody wants to see the picture now. And if you wanna, if you don't like yellow jackets as much, feel free to uh, look away. But we'll, we'll we'll come to that here in a second. So now, jumping back to the stickers real quick. So now we've got the holographic octo octopus. I've been calling her or him the uh, hollow octo. We've got the mini teacup in a microwave. Which the special that I'm running right now is you get this mini sticker for free for um, every two or more stickers. It doesn't have to be the same. It can be different. It doesn't matter. Um, then this is the holographic mushroom fairy house. And then, well, she was just so big. She was really big. And I was like, what is this? Like, what kind of yellow jacket is squash times two? Aw. Now she got photographed and immortalized forever in an illustration. We got the teacup and the apple fairy house. And here's what I'm thinking of doing. So I am so excited because I'm creeping up on 10,000 followers. <laughs> yeah, there you go, exclamation point fly. Uh, I'm creeping up on 10,000 followers on Instagram, which is a fairly big milestone because at 10,000 followers on Instagram, you get the swipe up feature. And the swipe up feature is, you know, like, hey, I'm live, swipe up. Oh, hey, and look at that. I just realized our subscriber count for YouTube is exactly 9,000. Like that's a even 9,000, that's awesome. Um, but anyway, uh, hi Espy, 10,000 is a really big milestone uh, in the YouTube channel world. So I was thinking about doing a giveaway um, for when I hit 10,000, which is at about 300 and something. It's a little under 400 away. Uh, but anyway, so I was thinking that I would give away a full set of the stickers and then to match, so like five stickers plus five drawings from the store. I mean, this is 10,000. So this has got to be a, a big price, right? So I don't know, because I might do like one and then like a second and third place. I haven't decided yet, 
but I do know that I want to do a giveaway when I hit 10,000. So uh, thanks, Kenny. So I'm, I've been debating, but now that we finally have the Hala Octopus, because if anybody knows from last week, I got the octopus in, but it didn't print in the right holographic thing. Anyway, I was a little disappointed, but they came in today and they just glow. Like I absolutely love them. Uh, but you can also, you can see all of these on the Etsy store right now. So just, a, just an idea. So if you're not following me on Instagram yet, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so this is the one we are going to be coloring today. Like I said, you can find this one on the Etsy store and we are going to be using the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Cause I finally, finally, finally have a set of these. I have been eyeballing these for ooh, about five years or so. So raise your hand if you want to see the inspiration picture of the yellow jacket, or if you'd really, I just rather not. <laughs> Let me know. I won't pop it up until every, because I know some people, um, you know, it's one thing if it's drawn slightly not realistic, but it's, and then it's another thing to actually see a picture of it. So if, if uh, bugs bother you, I don't want to, um, I don't want to bother anyone. So hi, Tony, welcome. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see the picture, let me know. Okay, let's see here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Let's... You don't have the panes gray? Uh, yes, I guess. <laughs> Lazzy does? Okay. All right. So, for anybody... Sorry, chapstick. For anybody that is watching this back post live stream, here's your warning now. I'm going to pop up a bug picture. If you don't like bugs... Maybe look away. All right. Okay. So here she is, and this is her on the mosquito netting. But she was so big, like I don't know. And she just she was so pretty. But turns out it's a queen yellow jacket. So the bottom right one is kind of what this one was fashioned off. Obviously, it's not exactly, but I mean, I was able to get enough close-up pictures of her that I was able to, you know, create a, a decent illustration. Still would have been dead. Hi, Nick and Tina. Hi, Arian. Oh, yeah, I already said, Arian, you're here. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but yeah, she was just chilling there on the mosquito netting, and I was just like, uh, okay, well, guess we'll guess we'll take this opportunity. Yeah, she's a, she's a queen yellow jacket. Yeah, she is. I couldn't tell you, like, it's, it's some sort of looking for fly swatter. <laughs> there we go. Exclamation point fly. There we go. Oh, geez, I thought I was ready. Oh, Laz, I'm sorry. Here, we'll, we'll shrink it down. We'll shrink it back down. I'm sorry. Not so big. Not so big. <laughs> but nobody got stung, and, and it was good. But anyway, that those photographs were the inspiration for this drawing. Just, like, the shape of her body was just so perfect. I will say, like, I've drawn... Yeah, they're huge, right? I was just like, what are you doing here? You're the queen. Go back home. <laughs> You know, like, uh, yeah, you know, normally you just see, like, little yellow jackets or something, me running and screaming in the house. <laughs> but, yeah, just the shapes, the shape of her was just so defined. I was like, how can I not draw a picture of her, you know? Anyway, she was so super pretty. So, um, is it the murder ones they're talking about? No, Ariane, no. These are just, this is just the normal, uh, the normal yellow jackets, um, but she's the queen, so she's a bit bigger and a bit more defined. So no, not the uh, murder hornets. <laughs> God, what a year, 2020, it's like, oh, virus, oh, murder hornets. It's like, oh, that's, that's nice. Okay then, I'm just gonna stay in my home for the remainder of the, uh, 2020. <laughs> okay, so as we can see, she's got a bit more of a red, um, oh my gosh, I feel like, you know, tail end. I, I know that they should know like the actual bug names for these, but honestly, I'm like drawing a blank right now. Let's see, I'm going to pull it up on my desktop so I can see it as a reference. Hold up, I don't want to accidentally minimize the wrong thing. There she is. Okay. There we are. Let's minimize that. Okay. There we go. I much prefer to what you used to put up pictures of fluffy kittens. Okay, okay. Hey, look, kittens. Kittens. I just filled a whole screen with kittens. Kittens. Look at all the kittens. <laughs> no bugs anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Here we go. Kittens. Here you go. Is that better? Am I forgiven? <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and choose some colors for her. I think definitely number 192, which is, looks like it's India Red. Hi, Cheryl. India Red. Some of these I haven't even used yet, so they're like, they're freshly sharpened. Like, they're so new and so nice. Yay, kitties. There you go. All right, let's see. Let's do... Or the full set of our teas on Mother's Day special. They were running 20% off. Nice, Sherry. Okay, so India Red. Do I want to go that dark? Yeah, we'll go that dark. And then let's do 188, which is... Oops, move over, try to keep these things in order. 188 is... Sanguine. Okay. 188... And then let's grab 186. 186. Here we go. Which is terracotta. Nice, Sherry. You'll love those. Okay. And then let's grab. Let's grab cream. Okay. Well, I call it cream. I'm already calling it cream in my head. Let's see. I'm, I like, in my head, I feel like I'm looking at the Arteza ones, but I'm not. Okay, 102. Oh, it is cream. Okay, haha. <laughs> All right. PDF page, but I need some paper. Is this paper okay? Need an exact index card? White, or have you one on your Amazon wish list? It's smooth, though. Yes, Angela. So I have the Nina on my Amazon wish list because I was really curious about it. But I ended up getting something different. Uh, hi, Arnie. You can type an exclamation point paper. And that'll bring you the link for the paper that I'm using. And it is pretty smooth, but it's a nice 80 pound paper. So right there, smooch point paper is accent 80 pound cardstock. So it, it's very smooth, it is. And somebody, I forget who was mentioned that they were, might've been, might've been Shara, that they were having a little bit of wax buildup issue with it. Um, I haven't experienced that yet, uh, but I, so far I'm really enjoying it. Could you do a tutorial on those sometimes? I don't know how to do skin tones with markers, just pencils. I don't remember if I've done that already. I will look into it, Sherry. I'll look into it. I feel like I did a page, but I might have... Oh, you know, when I did the review, I did some faces, but I'm not enough done a tutorial. Truth be told, I'm not super... Like, I, I can do faces and stuff, but it takes me a little bit of trial and error with, uh, with the markers. There we go. All right. So we are going to use the, let's zoom on in. All right. So we have India Red number 192. Let's see. Can we see these? Hmm. I don't always like the printing when they're like metallic because they don't come up very well on camera. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we've got 102, 186, 188, and 192. India Red, Sanguine, Terracotta, and Cream. Okay. And we're going to bring this in a little bit. Okay. Let's get this in focus here. Okay. Here we go. All right. So because a lot of this is similar, what I think I might do, because obviously the honeycomb, well, it's not even honeycomb, it's, I call it honeycomb because that's what I think of when I see it, but it's, it's more the shapes when yellow jackets or wasps make their little cluster of nests, you know, it's a general hexagon shape. So because it would take a while to do all of this, I think what we're going to do is like, I don't know that we'll get to it this stream, but on one of the streams we'll do, you know, we'll color some of these and then I'll do the rest. Um, off stream then maybe like I'll do one set of wings and do the other off stream kind of thing so that we aren't uh, doing a lot of the same stuff obviously the flowers are all different so we'll do those and then this background area here is a little bit different so but let's go ahead and get started 
thankfully we don't have to bash too often around here. It's pretty, pretty, you know, knock on wood, pretty troll minimum. Okay, I'm trying to make sure this is in focus. All right, we're good. All right, so here we go. We are gonna start with India Red, okay. I started practicing a little bit with Faber Castells. Uh, Johanna has her coloring contest right now. I feel like this still isn't in focus. This bothers me. No, I guess it is. It's just playing tricks on my eyes. So I started doing this with the Faber Castells. I was thinking of going for like a whole sepia toned uh, heart flower, but we'll see how far I get on it. That was about as far as I got before I got I had to get up and do something else. Not a lot of coloring time. Uh, off stream. <laughs> All right, so here we go. India Red. And this is actually my first time coloring this page. I mean, I draw a lot of pictures, but I don't always color them. What kind of pencil sharpener do you use? Uh, Melissa Clark, I use the, I don't know if you can see in this little, well, here, we'll do it here. It is the Doll 133, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's the Doll 133 Hand Creek Sharpener. I don't know, do I have a sharpener command? I should make a sharpener command. Sharpener, did I do it? Nah, it doesn't look like it did. I need to make a sharpener command. But yes, that is what I'm using. It is the uh, Doll 133 Hand Cake. I also have um, the Exacto School Pro um, electric sharpener, but I don't use that too often, especially on stream because it's kind of loud. <laughs> so yeah, when I um, drew this, you know, based off the picture that I took, I definitely took, you know, some creative kind of patterned, you know, creative license with her, but she was just too pretty to pass up. Just doing it kind of on the insides here. I think I just really loved her shape. And I would not recommend it for pastel pencils, breaks them. Ah, yes, I can imagine. That's probably a little bit too rough on them. Thanks, Isalina. Yeah, probably a handheld. Uh, if we're talking handheld sharpeners, the handheld one that I recommend, my pen, so I, oh, of course, it's right there. The handheld sharpener that I recommend is uh, this one here. This is the Studler sharpener and it's got two holes on it. Okay, so yeah, if you, if you look at it from a nature sense of, you know, shape and, and everything, yes, it could be pretty. Now, don't get me wrong, like I'm, you know, all about wasps and there are a handful of insects that I won't go near and I cannot even stand looking at. But she was just chilling there, minding her own business. And you know, how often do you see a yellow jacket queen and like just available to, to photograph, you know? She, she was very uh, accommodating. <laughs> Little Tagal today. Oh, awesome, Ms. Alina, how do you like it? It's appreciating nature is what it is. figure out what colors I want to do for these bands. I'll probably do something lighter 
more in that closer to yellow, not like a bright orange, but. Hi, Kelly. And Kelly, by the way, thank you for your membership. I saw that uh, after stream, so thank you. Kelly is our newest member to our coloring family. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and grab Sanguine. And we are going to go over that previous color, what is it, India Red? See, I have to get used to all these names now, too. I have a lot of the other names memorized, but they're all new to me now. For points not to break, I have to set on number two. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It didn't look much yellow, though. Well, it had, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it up, so forewarning, forewarning, I'm popping up the picture. It's got some yellow up above, and if you look at the bottom right one, the highlight has a little bit of yellow. So, I mean, like I said, I took some creative license with it, so it doesn't have to look exact, but if you look at the highlights at the very top of what is it, the abdomen, the thorax, whatever it is, uh, there's a little bit of like a yellowish highlight to it. So that's what I'm using as that reference. When you get up to the top part of her, then it's more yellow. The lower part of her is definitely more of a reddish brown though. Let's see. Welcome to the madhouse, Kelly. Oh, it's wonderful here. We're all mad here. <laughs> what is that from uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland? I say I think I've been watching you since you were doing our teas. Also, I favorite Castell. I didn't. I don't want to ruin them. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll do fine. Lazzy. Ah, thorax. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, not much, but um, since I have the different kind of pattern on here, I would like to do a slightly different color. So nothing, you know, largely yellow. But welcome, Dawn, to our coloring family. Thank you for subscribing. As long as you're just learning, hopefully you won't mind if I tell you that it's Indian red. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, this one here, this one here is Indian red. Oh, India red. Oh, it's Indian red? Are we talking about the color? Cause it says India red on here. Uh, oh, it's so hard to read on here, but yeah, it says in India red. This one is sanguine. But um, yeah, so I wanna make it a little bit different. This space in here will go for a darker black. Um, but yeah, probably the borders around we're gonna kinda treat as a highlight almost. Yay, more first, almost new emote, I know, right? Just got done swatch my metallic Arteza watercolors. Oh, Kelly, how do you like them? Aren't they so fun to swatch? Like when I did my review, I hadn't painted with them before. So like my reaction to it being on the, bla on the black was like my legit reaction because I don't know, I expected it because like that uh, iridescent, what was it, green or blue? It was like one of them or, or pink maybe. Anyway, it was, it was so light on the white paper and then it just like, boom, popped on the black, and I was just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> well, that one came out of nowhere. But still, pleasantly surprised, and now I understand why they keep black with it. Where mine says Indian red. Yeah, um, yeah, it says India red, but you know what? Maybe they changed the name a little bit. Um, just because my set, I'm pretty sure, is a brand new, like, made set only because, you know, they were out of stock for so long, they probably had to make more. So maybe they changed it. Maybe they thought that calling it Indian red was maybe like, uh, like racist versus India red. Cause that's more like, not cultural, but it's, fo it focuses more on, I don't know what, I guess the culture of a color versus, versus Indian red. Uh, that's, that's my guess. Some of the names were changed slightly in the newer sets of polys. Ah, that must be what it is. That must make sure you do the numbers. Uh, yeah, so the India Red was number 192 and Sanguine was 188. So here, let me, hang on one second. Let me just write this down. I love what Belinda has done where she's got all of them marked on. The problem is I never know what colors I'm gonna use. So I like, I can't prep the colors because I, I never know until I actually grab them. 
when did the new set come out so it's, it's not that they're new colors um but dick blick got in um some more pencils and so i had ordered mine and it was back ordered um and so my guess is they had to make more which tells me that mine was probably freshly uh i, I want to say freshly printed but that's not right <laughs> okay so we have india red number 192 and then we've got Sanguine, uh, let's see, number 188, and then we've got Terracotta 186, number 186, and then Cream, if this is too light, I'll write it with something else, Cream, yeah, that's pretty light. Cream is going to be number 102. There we go. Okay, so those are the four colors we're using uh, currently. Here, maybe we can slide these over here. Hey, maybe? Okay, we'll put it there. Freshly produced, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's probably better. Actually, we'll just zoom out a little bit and we'll put it, let's cut off this part. Okay. We'll put it right there. There we go. Now we got it. Now we got it. <laughs> yeah, so I I, uh, I suppose I could do what she did make, because she has like little flippy cards, right? Doesn't she? Something like that. It's a good idea. I need to do that. Okay, let's see. I was using Sanguine. There we go. Yeah, a lot of times I just kind of go off the cuff and decide, so I was like, oh, okay. But that could work. I could write down little, little bits. Okay. Put that there. Okay. Now we're going to go 60 count polys for 120. Nice, Isalina. Sammy does that. That's who it is. That's who it is. Thank you, Allison. I got my full set three years ago. I was like, wait, they came out with a new set? Yeah, no, it's the, it's the uh, oh, Lazy, <laughs> top chat party. Um, yeah, no, it's just that they ran out. So my guess is since they ran out, they either had some in their warehouse or they had to physically make more sets. Sorry, I'm just making sure it's in focus. Um, or they had to physically make more sets. So it's, it's one of the two. All right, terracotta now. thing it is too is even though we have a reference picture there's nothing that says you have to color it exactly that way either I mean I took creative license when drawing her surely we can take creative license when coloring her probably forget to get the cards out all the time just like I always end up forgetting to uh, to call out the colors but I have been trying to do better about making sure that I add the colors after the video go ahead and grab you have the mer house nice sherry uh we're gonna go ahead and grab cream which is 102 and i know i was coloring vertical there but i'm gonna color horizontal now okay. now we've got kind of a reddish orange here so for a contrasting shadow color we could choose either a blue or a green would work here. I need to go back and do these little sections too. In fact, let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab, um, what was this? Terracotta. I'm going to grab terracotta. Okay. 
confused. Some little bits there, because they're just little spots. And look at that, I didn't even add it on the other side. I'm terrible when I do something that's like symmetrical. I'll have a tendency to just do one side and not the other. Hi, Allie! Yes, new pencils! The mushy house is my white whale. <laughs> it's Selena. Yes, these are the polychromos. Yay! Okay, we're going to use our cream here. Just in these little little sections, okay? All right, so for our contrasting, um, let's see, darken up, that's back like that. For our contrasting color, let's go ahead and choose, hi Katrina, welcome. Uh, let's see, let's look at our color chart here, one sec. Ooh, I put too much stuff on here. Hang on. And now I'm dropping pencils. Yes, that's the way you're supposed to treat your favorite castells. Just, just drop them. <laughs> I'm a good pencil owner. This is what happens when I have too much stuff on my desk. Either that or maybe I just need a bigger desk. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Yes, I was so excited. If anybody is curious what she is talking about, in the Etsy store, we have our new, the way the blue is printed and everything, it's like he's glowing. Oh. It's just so cool. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, awesome, Kelly. Well, I'm sending out some stuff tomorrow, so if you get... I just... It was one, Bozzy! It was one! I dropped one! It rolled! It rolled and fell... But it landed on carpet! It landed on carpet! I'm sorry here. I'll apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Um. let's take a look here. Let's do these colors I think something like a teal like a blue green would work so I'm leaning towards 155 and 155 is let's see helio turquoise okay so here let's grab this little piece of paper here oh awesome Allison well, I'll take a look at everything after stream. Okay, so this is Helio Turquoise. Ooh, I can't spell turquoise number 155. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Patty! Welcome! Patty is our newest member to our coloring family here. Now, Patty, you have a fancy little pencil badge that will change color the longer that you are a member. So next month, you will have a nice orange pencil. And 156, 156 is, 156 is cobalt green. Cobalt green, Mike, and welcome, Mike. Um, and you also have access to all of our fun little emotes. Since they load, here we go, emote, 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 emote. There we go. And in fact, um, so right now we have a deal going in the store where um, for every two, let's see, where did it go? Oh, there it is. For every two stickers, uh, you know, any two stickers, two or more, uh, you also get the little freebie, little teacup stick anyway it's one of our emojis <laughs> i'll be lurking as i took meds okay patty sounds good thank you so much for joining i appreciate it okay so now we are going to use let's zoom on in okay get that in focus there we go let's see all right hang on i need to fix one thing Bear with me. Bear with me. Hold on. Hang on. Sometimes I like to have the stream up on my phone. So sometimes when I'm adjusting color, I can see what you all are seeing. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Let's go ahead. No, not the microwave. <laughs> exactly. All right. So here, we'll put this here so you can see what we're using. And this was what we used there okay all right so now we're going to go ahead and use helio turquoise okay we're not going to use a ton but what we're doing is we're using this for our contrasting shadow color here 
and then we're going to go over with another layer of these four colors here. Sounds good, Patty. Rest up. Do you have a hard time reading the stuff off their pencils? Um, not in real life. Patty, but I mean, I mean, not Patty, um, Sherry, and by real life, I mean, like, not in person. However, like, I struggle to have them show up on stream because they are, um, you know, they're so shiny, like, you can kind of see it there. Got to catch the light just right for it to read. Um, but no, not, not in person. I mean, I might have to turn it a little bit, but if it was printed white or black, like, I might have an easier time to read it. You just did that for fun. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use this Helio Turquoise. In the corners here, and then like I said, we're gonna go back over with our India Red. So this is actually gonna come out probably looking a bit more red um, than usual. And you can see now, it's not really popping green or blue, it's almost looking black, but that's because that's the kind of color that you get when you mix these two colors together, which is why it works out well as a contrasting shadow color. And as I usually say it anyway for anybody that might be new to the stream, if you are struggling to choosing your contrasting shadowing colors, get your hands on a color wheel. Um, you can type exclamation point, uh, exclamation point color wheel in chat if you want to go. I think you get it for like five bucks. Um, but one of the things you can use is, so we had kind of a reddish orange uh, thing going on here. So when you're using contrasting shadow colors, you wanna choose what's the complementary color of the main color that you're using. So, you know, we had red, we had orange, we had a little bit of yellow, but our main color was kind of a red orange. So you go directly opposite the color on the color wheel and you get blue green, which is why we chose um, a, a teal color. You don't have that color, what would be a good substitute color? Um, for Helio Turquoise, probably 158, which is a deep cobalt green, Sherry. Deep cobalt green would probably uh, work okay for that. That is, so this is what we're using. This could work. It's going to be a little bit darker, so I would go lighter. Um, but you could also use 153 if you wanted to, which is cobalt, cobalt turquoise. But any of these kind of darker teal tones would work. Um, but a color wheel is super handy when you are trying to figure out colors to use, what colors that go well together. And plus, on this particular color wheel, you've got lots of little things that'll tell you. So you've got, you know, primary, secondary, tertiary, warm, cool, color hue. It's got loads of definitions. So if you have a lot of questions about colors, that is also extremely helpful. So, um, I highly recommend a color wheel for anyone. Oh, awesome, Sherry. Because I don't ever do, I've never really been one to draw or color hyper-realistically. I, I just can't do it and it blows my mind whenever I can see, like Lisa Matrokin is really good at that and like her drawings are just so, so awesome. I think for me when I color, I focus more on like what's pleasing to the eye. Um, I like to focus on, you know, bright colors. You know, sometimes I'll mix it up like this one here for Johanna's um, coloring contest right now, I was thinking, oh, let's mix it up and let's do, you know, darker tones all in browns or something, which if you look at my Instagram, that is not something I usually do. But for me, I definitely focus on color and balance and I, I want something that kind of draws your eye around the picture, almost draws it in a circle. You know, you don't fall on any um, dead spots too often or anything. Um, so I probably focus on color and balance more than anything else and what can be, you know, pleasing to the eye. I learned to do fur with her. Oh, awesome, Sherry. Yeah, Lisa, if you haven't checked out Lisa Matrokin yet, you should. She, um, right now is doing some, like, I forget what she calls them, but they're like her survival videos and she has been live streaming, I think it's Monday through Friday. You can go to her YouTube and check um, but it's Monday through Fridays for like 30 minutes or an hour or something like that in the evenings. I think it usually happens at about seven my time. Um, but you can just search Lisa Matrokin and that comes up. Um, Matrokin is spelled, oh, 
I think it's M-I-T-R-O-K-H-I-N. I think it's how it's spelled. Anyway, um, go ahead and check her out because you will learn a lot from her, especially if you like to color or draw hyper-realistically. That's ending soon? Okay, I wondered. I wasn't sure when, when she was finished with that. But she's still, even after this thing, she's still going to be, I'm sure, doing videos and streams regularly. Just perhaps a different schedule, but she'll probably keep everybody posted for that. Also, um, and she hasn't, I'm sure she'll pick up streaming again at some point. Um, but Laura Rafferty, also known as Laura Colors 2, is also really, really good. Um, she's also on Instagram. She's got a book. She does uh, circle portraits. She has this on her Etsy. In fact, I think I have a command for her, exclamation point LR. And she has circle portraits. So if you like to um, color faces, Laura's books are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And in fact, in the very back, thank you, Azalina. In the very back, she's got these small, so if you're wanting to practice faces and like parts of faces and stuff, this is the book to get. So um, Laura Rafferty, if you like coloring portraits and whatnot, check her stuff out and she's, she's so good. You can learn so much from her. But right now she's taking some time as she is a sewing queen right now and she is sewing a ton of masks for um, her local hospitals and businesses. She's, yeah, she's, she's been awesome. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab India Red again. Okay, and we're gonna go over that Helio Turquoise. Now you can see that this is coming out more like a darkened red and less like a black now also, which is what we want. I rarely do things, unless it's something super small, I rarely do things in just one layer. So I count it as series of four here I did was kind of like layer one and then the helio turquoise was kind of its own separate thing and now for the main colors this will be layer two think of the helio turquoise as like layer one and a half <laughs> you know like the lion king it worked out well for them has any questions feel free to ask and we use all four of these colors again so you'll see kind of how they all blend together to create a gradient using that India red. Ah, okay. oh, thank you, Lazi. Thanks, Sherry. So that was that India Red. Now we're going to go ahead and grab Sanguine, okay, which is that number 188. And we're going to blend over the top of that India Red here. Hang on one second, okay? is proud of self. You should be, Lazi. You should be. Oh, awesome, Sherry. I can't wait to see it. Let's see which side was I on. 
<laughs> Bozzy, good for you! <laughs> oh no, Kenny! It wasn't a bashy thing. <laughs> I am going to turn on the fan in here real quick. Okay, one second. Okay, one second, chat. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. The air conditioner was being really loud, so I was just like, okay. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. I showed my internet who's boss. I made it back. <laughs> I bet it never plays up when you're watching, when you aren't watching streams. I know, right? These pencils are probably a good fit for you, Emily. You have a light touch and love layers. Yes, Patty, they have been fantastic. Hi, Rhea. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, back to it. Back to it. Let's see. We were using Sanguine. Okay. Get these last little bits here. Okay. All right. And then let's go ahead and grab 186. And we're going to go over this. So you can see this is much more kind of red and orangey than it was after our first layer. You know, the funny thing is, so how many years back? A couple of years back, like three years back, I was very curious about the Faber-Castells um, just because I'd heard so much about them and everybody, you know, was so like, oh, Faber-Castell this, Faber-Castell that. And I'm like, okay, well, clearly they must be, terracotta is probably your most used pencil. It's a nice color. And I was just like, well, dang, man, everybody's talking about, they must be really good pencils. So obviously with the cost, um, I wasn't, for a pencil I didn't know about, I wasn't going to, uh, you know, just straight up purchase them. So my husband got me a 12 set for, um, for Christmas and I tried them out and honestly, I didn't like them. But here's the difference is three years ago, I had an extremely different coloring style. I was using almost strictly Prismacolors. And so, I mean, anybody that uses Prismacolors know that, I mean, Prismacolors and, and Faber-Castell are like night and day. No worries, was on Belinda Stream, love all things Aurora Borealis. Oh, no worries, no worries. Faber-Castell, yeah, um, you can get open stock. I got these at Dick Flick and you can get open stock there too. I mean, there's lower stock right now just because of everything going on. But yeah, you can get open stock there. Um, but yeah, so my coloring style was so, 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 so different just because Prismacolors blend immensely different. I mean, for lack of a better term, they are so waxy that they essentially smush on top of each other. 
And in that sense, they're an extremely forgiving pencil. I mean, I cannot tell you how many mistakes I accidentally made. And um, it just, yeah, I was able to fix it just because of their layering capability. So um, anyway, so I put them aside. I was just like, eh, you know, they're all right. They're not, they're not really for me kind of thing. And then sometime after that, I started using, <laughs> great, more pencils. <laughs> I started using um, Ergosoft's. Now, Ergosofts are also, I mean, there's really no other pencil that I have found that is like Prismacolors. I mean, it is, they are so, they're so creamy, but they just have so many breakage issues, you know? Um, but anyway, so I started using Ergosofts, and with Ergosofts, you have to use light layers. Like, they just don't blend the way that Prismacolors do, and you can't go into them, get, go into using them thinking that you will get a result like Prismacolors, especially if, like me, that's what you were used to. And so I feel like, I, I feel like, uh, Eek, I poked over, it's a bee, I hate those bad-tempered little buggers. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Loretta, it is a queen yellow jacket. So she's, you know, a bit more, a bit more fancy. I love the favorite Castell eraser with brush on top. Ooh, that could be fun. I just get too easy a wax bloom with them. Exactly, exactly. All right, Tony, have a great night. Rest up. Um, and so I feel like as much as I love Ergosofts, they were almost like, the training pencils that I needed to get ready for Faber-Castells because now I have a much better idea of how to layer lightly to be able to get the look that you need, especially, I'm using cream now, especially when using uh, the Faber-Castells. So if you are strictly a Prismacolor user, um, I would approach Faber-Castells with caution in the sense that do not expect them to act the same way that Prismacolors do. Mainly for the fact that Prismacolors are a wax-based pencil and uh, Polychromos are a oil-based pencil. Hi, Diane. No worries. No worries. Ooh, pizza's at the door. Pizza sounds good. I didn't like Polly's for a long time. I sent them back twice. Oh, goodness, Kenny. Now I love them. Nope, doesn't make you feel better. It's a yellow jacket, which has me running and screaming. Well, it's a good thing you weren't here because we actually, I had my reference picture up here because this is after, I drew this after a picture, um, a picture that I took. So uh, I, I will not show that here. I, I will do you a favor and not show that. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Oh, thanks, Loretta. Yeah, we did India Red, Sanguine Terracotta Cream, and then Helio Turquoise as our contrasting shadow color. So we are actually going to use essentially the same colors minus, minus the India Red on this. So we are going to start with Sanguine because I want to keep it pretty similar, but I want these outside lines to be lighter than before. Yeah, see, exactly. You're never late. You arrive precisely when you mean to. Okay, so we're going to start with Sanguine. Okay. So we're still going to have that nice kind of orangey red color. It will just be much lighter around the outside. There we go. And for anybody watching, if you are interested in this image, you can find this drawing um, in my Etsy store, and you can type exclamation point Etsy in chat. Okay, so we're just going to kind of go down all the way down here. Let's see. Can't afford full set, but bought them a couple at a time over the years. Yeah, this was definitely something that I and my husband and we talked about for such a long time. Like, we, I had been eyeballing them for five years. I am almost literally phobic of wasps. Oh no, Loretta, well it makes you feel any better. It's a yellow jacket. But Polly's are the precious ones, Kenny. I feel right. <laughs> well, that's all right then. That would explain the issues I have with Mushy House. What, what would explain it, Isalina? Oh, awesome, Kenny. Thank you. But yeah, this is, I haven't, you know, I've done a few B pictures over the time. Um, when pre-kids, when I had much more free time on my hands, um, and when I lived in uh, the Pacific Northwest, I would just take my camera out because I was a photo editor at the time for a newspaper, and I would just take my camera out, and I loved to go to, um, there was this winery where I was at, and I'd go out and photograph in it, 
and of course there were bees all over the place um, and so I'd have plenty of opportunity to photograph the bees and you know I'd go to the state capitol and photograph the flowers of the park and I just took pictures of everything so a lot of my pictures that I've drawn are from my reference photos from when I used to go out and just photograph stuff all the time hi Della welcome I'm just busy spraying skunks through a side window when they come up on my back steps trying to get on the back porch it's about the only thing that seems to deter them at all they don't spray when when you like are you spraying them with water they don't spray you when you do that layering with prismas ah oh, gotcha Isalina gotcha yeah, Sherry, I, I really enjoyed it. It was it was a, it was an awesome experience. Before we moved down here, um, like I mentioned, I was a photo editor, but I also like photographed weddings and families and babies. So I did a bit of a career change when we came down here and decided to have my own babies. And so now, you know, I use my my camera to photograph, you know, my artwork and my kids and um, I'll occasionally do a baby photo shoot um, for my friends if they have a new baby or something. But we always have nice family pictures every year. <laughs> but it's funny because all my knowledge that I learned from being a photo editor has actually come in handy quite a bit with photographing my artwork as well. Let's see, I don't do prismas as I get a waxy bloom, which, yeah, and they, they, they break too much for me. I honestly don't use prismacolors unless I have a special request to do it. I have so many other pencils that I prefer so much more. I love taking pics. I have over 6,000 pics, and remember what I was doing at the time was taken. That's awesome, Ms. Lena. Where at the Northwest? I'm in Gig Harbor, Washington. Uh, Oregon, Angela. I was uh, Oregon, kind of um, Portlandish area. But I've been to Seattle multiple times. I love that whole area. Like, it's just... I, I would love to move back there someday, most definitely. The weather is gorgeous. There's like, the mosquitoes are not as bad. <laughs> I'll take a spider any day. The, the bugs in Texas are too big. Hence the, you know, giant yellow jacket. <laughs> and so far they've not. I keep low to the bottom of the and spray them through the screen with a squirt bottle. Whew, you are a, you are a brave woman, Loretta. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go ahead and use terracotta number 186. So we're getting the same tone of colors, but because we started with a slightly lighter color, the, uh, the edge still pops because you have this dark next to the light. Like I said, I don't ever really go for hyper-realistic, but I go more for pleasing to the eye. So I, that's why I like my colors a lot. I mean, if you look at my Instagram as a whole. Occasionally, you know, like I started doing these brown flowers, but occasionally um, I will, you know, do something off. But for the most part, the general theme of my pictures tend to be like full rainbowy colors. But that's also because I color with Ergosoft a lot and there's only 36. So I generally use all 36 pencils in the set. You know, I should do, I should challenge myself to only use one Ergosoft or like yeah, like one ergo soft color and then like a contrasting shadow color and like that's it. Imagine when I come out with that. That'd be a bit of a challenge. I have a few of those that are challenged. Like if you scroll down far enough on my Instagram, you'll see I challenged myself to only use, um, do I did like the dragon in Enchanted Forest um, only in grays. That was, that was entertaining. <laughs> As Lena says, I have to call it a night. Got early day tomorrow. All, all right, as Lena, we'll have a great night. I'm kind of up above them when they're on the steps. I'm tired of dealing with them every night. I don't blame you. Yes, definitely have to appreciate no mosquitoes. Yeah, exactly. It's like here, four or five o'clock rolls around, and it's like you have to decide, well, is it worth the risk, or do I just, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I miss the, the weather up there, definitely. Okay, so let's use some cream. We're going to do that middle highlight there. I'm not worried about the fact that I'm covering up these little diamond shapes. We're going to use gel pen on those. Um, yeah, I miss the Pacific Northwest. It is beautiful, beautiful up there. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, Texas has its charms for sure. The town we live in is very family friendly, which is nice. But, you know, my family's all up there. I miss my family. I miss the weather. I miss, you know, only being a short little jaunt to the beach. And yeah. Or challenge yourself to use each one of the polys at least once on a page. <gasps> oh, Lazy, that's not a bad idea. I mean, intense, but it's not a bad idea. Maybe like a mandala. We could do like a mandala like that. That might be a little bit easier. But then the question is, should we go easier? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to use that Helio Turquoise. 
That'd be really interesting. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this Helio Turquoise. I'm gonna go a little bit there, but the idea is to kind of darken this edge a little bit. And then we'll go back over with that Sanguine again. Oh yeah, Patches? Or I keep calling you Patches, but it's Patty. No, Mandala's too easy. Oh, you're gonna make it difficult for me. You know, actually, I wanna get your opinion. So for those of you that were here earlier and I've shown it uh, another time here. So the uh, Hollow Octopus is in the store today. And the octopus is based off of the drawing from the mermaid because the octopus is sitting on top of the mermaid house but it just got me thinking i was wondering if i should take this picture that i drew for the sticker and release that as a coloring page because it's got that mandala behind it and then there's the whole uh, octopus but i don't know it's pretty similar to the mermaid drawing already so perhaps on a jv's wallpaper of flowers that could work just coloring is challenging enough for me don't need to make it harder <laughs> i get that i get that yeah, I've done a few because Prismacolor has so many grays. When I was really into Prismacolors, I did, so the dragon all in grays, and then I did um, the tree with the door in the middle of Johanna's. I did that all in grays except for the door. The door is green. Um, and then one of her treehouse pictures, all I used was Tuscan Red and the Blender Pencil, which is saying something since I don't really like the Blender Pencil. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Angela. I'm realizing now that this thing is ending up looking like a little metallic, actually. It's kind of interesting. All right, let's go ahead and grab, let's shift that back down. There we go. Let's grab that sanguine. So I went real light with that Helio Turker. I said, I don't want to go too dark. But the idea is just to give it a little bit of darkness there on the edge. Okay, so now what we need to do is pick out our colors for these black lights. I don't want to do just straight black black. We're going to do a little bit of like a lighter gray color too. So let's look here. Well, these are our dark colors. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so obviously one of the colors is going to be 199, which is, go figure, black. They made that one nice and easy. 199. Now the thing of it is too is we don't have that much space, so I'm not going to choose like five different ranges of colors to try and fill it in because otherwise it's not going to be muddy. So or not, it is going to be muddy. So um, black is a pretty strong color in itself. I think what we'll do is we'll choose three colors. So let's go black. And then 235, which is cold gray six. It's got the little Roman numerals. So this was 235. And then let's grab 232, which is cold gray three. Okay. So we've got. Oh, well, thanks, Della. Yeah, I'm realizing how it looks now, and I'm like, huh. All right, well, that worked out. It may pop a bit more once we add the black. All right, so we are going to be... You got my, my skizzers here. Yoink. See, I should just keep these little cards around. <laughs> it's just kind of scrap paper left over from a picture I had. Uh, cut a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna have this is black number 199 Okay, black 199 and then cold gray 6 235 Let's see VI I always have to stop and think for Roman numerals 235 Okay 
and then 232 cold gray 3. And that, what did I say, 232? Okay, so let's shift these out of the way here. All right, these are the colors we're going to use. Um, I Since this is a new set, there are some pencils I haven't used yet. So uh, I'm going to give these a quick sharpen here in a second. Just so I can get some nice sharp points on them. Especially since we're doing that kind of small space in there. Okay. And black. Okie doke. All right. Oops, slid that right off, didn't I? All right. So now we're going to go ahead and work on these inside things. Now, I want to check something on the picture real quick. You know what? I realized something. These little things here, let's zoom out just a bit. Here we go. These little things here in the picture of the actual yellow jacket, these are actually dark. So we might actually take a little bit of black to these because on the yellow jacket, and I have the reference picture. I know not everybody likes to see the bug, so I'm not going to pop it up. But if you do want to see it, let me know. Um, but these little semicircles here are kind of um, a darker black, so we might do that. My first set of pencils were Prismacolor. Sometimes I feel I can't blend the colors good. I have a heavy hand. Should I try your technique and go lighter and more layers? The way that I figure, so Prismacolors are a pencil that I felt you can have a little bit of a heavy hand with, but if you're struggling, especially if you put down a big heavy layer first and you want to blend that, you're going to have a real hard time blending it. So for instance, let me just grab, let me just grab something real quick. Okay. I just want to show you something. All right, this is a scrap piece of paper we had from before. Okay, so these are two Prisma colors, all right? We got a green and a blue. What is this? Celadon green and turquoise or something? Anyway, okay, so say you are starting to color a shape and you suddenly lay down something like that. You're pressing real hard and then you go in and you want to go ahead and blend. So you take your, I think this is muted turquoise. You take this and that broke, see? And this is why I don't use Prisma colors. Also, it's a sign that maybe I'm pressing too hard. All right, here, let's grab, let's grab this green here. All right, let's start this over. Okay, so you press real hard and then you take, like this is olive green, and you press hard again. These two are not gonna blend very well together because, well, this one, that one that I had in my hand, Sherry, it was short. I couldn't really hold it very back far because it was only like this big. Oop. Um, anyway, so it's not going to blend very well together when you press hard at first. So light layers are a good thing because you can, it's always easier to recover from light layers than it is heavier layers. So for instance, now let's go ahead and take this olive green and we're going to start a little heavier on the edge, but this is a good, um, kind of a good rule of thumb in any pencils that you're using, especially if you want to blend. So you start heavier and then as you go in for your space, you go a little bit lighter. Okay. Pencil anxiety, I know. Maybe get some watercolor pencils and blend just, just a minimal bit of water. That could work. And then if you take your celadon green and you're coming from the other side, you can press a little bit harder. And then as you go in, you go a little bit lighter. And now you can see that these two colors are going to be blending better. And then what I do is I generally will do it again if I need to. So now we'll take the olive green again. Okay, and this time I'm pressing a little bit lighter. And lighter, lighter, lighter. I'm going to go over that celadon a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take my celadon. I'm going to blend that in. And then they blend together much easier. And these were, of course, just two random ones that I chose. If you really wanted to, to also help in your blending, one of the other things you can do, now keep in mind it'll lighten your color, but you can take just, um, you can take just a white Prismacolor here, and you can blend over with your white Prismacolor, <sighs> crumbling, um, and that also helps to blend it. So, my recommendation, if you're struggling and you feel like you're pressing too hard, definitely go lighter. 
And then as you experiment and you find what works as far as heavy hand versus light hand, then you can move forward with it and maybe, you know, try pressing a little harder, try pressing a little lighter. It kind of just depends. So it's more about experimentation. So just take a page and just do that. Try to blend two colors together. Start out blending two colors that are very similar. So like a nice kind of, you know, uh, uh, like something like this. These would blend well together because they are a similar in range. There's not a big jump. It's not like you're trying to blend a red with a blue. You've got colors that are in the similar color family. So start out with that and practice your blending in that way. In fact, Angela, if you're not part of our Facebook group, if you go to our Facebook group, exclamation point Facebook, in the files there is a free uh, worksheet and on it it's got a bunch of little flowers and you can practice on that as well. Um, but just practice. Grab two colors that are fairly similar and try and blend those. Once you're able to blend those in just a simple little swatch like I just did, then graduate to maybe colors that are a little bit different like maybe do, um, do a uh, dark blue and a light purple. That's going to take a little bit more practice to blend. Um, you could also grab multiple colors grab three, grab a dark, a mid, and a light, and try and blend that. So it's all about practice. And if you're nervous about, like, say you have one book and you're like, oh, I don't want to ruin the page. First of all, don't worry too much because, you know, it's just a picture. You'll be okay. But if you are wanting to practice, then um, go ahead and take your sheet of paper and try and just do some block blending before you try and blend in a specific kind of shape. And once you get your hand with that and you figure out the kind of pressure that you need, it's going to make it a lot easier for you in the long run when you start using those techniques in your pictures. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I go off on tangents. I do. Fully expect tangents when you guys come here. <laughs> okay, so now go ahead and use black. Uh, let's see, do I still have this? Yeah, okay, so we're going to zoom it a little bit. There we go. All right, so we're going to start with black, our darkest color on the outside, kind of like we did before. It's okay if it's not super dark yet. We're going to go over on another layer. Yeah, I tend to tend to go off on tangents a little bit. And you know, it's 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 funny. Like coloring is something that I I mean, I guess yeah, passionate would be the right. Coloring is something I feel passionate about. And it's enjoyable for me, especially when there are questions in chat and I know I know the answer and I know that I can at least try and attempt to help. And so I really enjoy like going off on my tangents cuz you know, it's funny when I was younger, I always knew like, I always thought I wanted to be an art teacher, and then, you know, I realized that how mean teenagers can be, and I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. But this is, like, perfect, because I can, this is something that I know specifically about, and I know all of you want to be here. You know, if you're here, it's because you want to be here, and you enjoy these things as well, you know, and so it's just, it's so much fun for me to, to you know, talk with you guys. <laughs> Love your tangents. I learned a lot from that. Oh, I'm glad, Aspie. <laughs> All right, so now we've got cold gray six two thirty five. Okay, and I just go over that black a little bit more, work my way in. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of things about the art world that I don't know. I mean, there are a number of streams that I can watch and be like, oh. Oh, okay and like I said there are some things I just can't wrap my brain around like I have a hard time drawing people people are really hard but there are a few things that I feel comfortable in uh, talking about and coloring is one of them hi Carolyn awesome Angela a pencil summit was direct oh oh calm it was ah gotcha 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 to pull it yeah so what Sherry's talking about if you are coloring like this that can be harder, but if you extend where you're holding your pencil at, you can get more of a style like. So when you're here, it's harder for you to color suit light. You can, but it's harder to color light. But if you hold your pencil out like this and color more at the side, it's easier to get a heavier hand because you're not coloring directly down like this either and you're getting the broader side of the lead and you're not putting as much pressure on the pencil itself because if you were to put pressure here that would break your lead right there so you can just hold it at the edge and kind of color on the side almost so if you are practicing your shading that's another good way to um, work at that 
Okay, so now we're going to use cold gray three. Okay, and we're going to go back over this with another layer. All right, let's, yeah, it is awkward at first. And it's really nice too, using that style with holding it, here you can see in the camera, holding it at the further back is also nice when you're doing uh, backgrounds because it's easier to cover large areas of space. Okay, so 199, let's see, make sure that's still in there. No problem. dark color here at the edge because I mean this area is, is meant to be black you know and then I remembered I also want to add a little bit of black to these half circles here semicircles half circles I don't know how to describe them these little shapes these little shapes she's got going on because I looked at the picture and these are actually darker. There we go. Let's start black here. Let me start black here. Let's get a little quieter when I'm concentrating. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get a drink real quick before we move on. I think with art or coloring, you can learn something new every day. It amazes me what we can learn from another and how open and nice everyone is. Oh, I know, Kelly, right? Like, I have grown so much. Okay, good night, Arnie. Get some rest. Um, like, if I look back at, I don't even know if I still have it up. I might not have it up anymore. Um, but my very first picture was one of the dragonflies from Johanna's stuff. And it is so different from what I'm coloring now. Uh, now we're using 235. And... Um, after I colored it, I distinctly remember telling my husband, like, wow, I wish I could see how everybody else did it. Anyway, I did, you know, a few searches on Facebook and found a coloring group. And I mean, the rest is history. I was seeing what everybody else was doing. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. So I would not have come as far as I have if it hadn't been for the coloring community in general, because I've learned so much from everybody. You know, you pick up a piece here, pick up a piece there. And it's like, okay, all right, this makes sense. I should give this a try. No microwave tea, right? Mm, no promises. Thanks, Kenny. All right, so now we're going to do cold gray three. Yeah, I guess this was cold gray three. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. All right. So we're going to fill in this part here. Okay. All right. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now, the upper part of her body looks a little bit um, like yellowish. So let me look at my picture here. I won't pop it up, don't worry. So definitely the main part of the yellow, but the edges are almost a little bit brown. Her legs kind of are a little bit darker brown at the base than yellow as they go along. So let's work on the top area here and we're gonna do some more yellow, some stronger yellow colors. So let's take a look at, at this here. Okay, so we've used, I still wanna stay in the same kind of family. So we're definitely gonna use terracotta. Okay, so terracotta. Now we're gonna use more of a yellowish, 183 looks good, what is 183? 183 is yite, yite, light yellow ochre. I cannot talk. Okay, so 183, and then let's grab, let's see, do I wanna do 106 or is that too bright? Three, let's grab 185. And that's gonna be Naples yellow. And then we'll follow that up with cream again, okay? So let's grab our little, little square piece of paper here. Here we go. Okay, 
so we have let's see this was terracotta 186 okay I'm just gonna write the rest of these with black because they're so light okay so we have light yellow ochre and that is number 183 and we have Naples yellow number 185 and cream number 102 the yellows are just too bright sounds good Cheryl yite little yoker yeah exactly Lazi exactly good night Cheryl have a great night thanks for stopping by okay here we are all right so we're gonna start with terracotta kind of how we did with the other one we're gonna go around the edge here so this 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 and then this whole space here is gonna be yellow and then these shapes here will be our black colors which we'll use the same colors of black cold gray six and cold gray three says Lello, yeah. <laughs> Any suggestions on pencils? I'd love, I love Faber-Castell, but I need to save up for them. Um, Angela, if you don't have um, the Stedler Ergo Softs, uh, what is the command for that? It is exclamation point Ergo Soft. I think that's all it is. Um, those are great starter pencils and they're affordable, especially if you're wanting to get used to um, something that's maybe not quite as waxy as Prismacolors are. I highly recommend uh, the Stedler Ergo Soft. And you can create beautiful pictures with those. I mean, we just did a big Lost Ocean page using just um, Stedler Ergo Softs. Black Widows, yes, Black Widows are good too. And Black Widows, you can purchase in different sections. They are coming out with some new colors here soon as well. Yes, and Artezas. The Artezas are great too. And they have some fairly decent size sets. And in fact, I've got a coupon code. Let's see, Arteza Pencil. And this is for the 120 set, but they have smaller ones. Um, and then I've got a coupon code right now too. It's uh, Emily Illustrator 7. Um, and that can get you 10% off as well. Sorry, some of these pencils I have not used. He was tired of his high. Oh, I'm gonna guess you mean his hair. Oh no, Cheryl, did he cut it? Okay, so we did the terracotta. Now we're gonna go ahead and do light yellow ochre, because I can't talk, light yellow ochre. So excited for the new sets to come out. Oh, I know, me too. All right, so light yellow ochre. And I'm going to go over that terracotta. That helps with the blend also to go over your previous color. Not just start a brand new color, but blending is just that. You're blending two colors. So if you can do one color over the other, that's going to give you a much smoother blend. And it helps to kind of richen up your previous color, especially if you're doing light layers. Okay. Hair and cut it himself. Looks like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> Aw. All right, now we're going to grab Naples Yellow. I keep trying to convince my husband to let me cut his hair. He's fairly hesitant, and honestly, I don't blame him. <laughs> All right, Naples Yellow here. My daughter's hair was easy enough to cut just because it's, you know, I have... I have the uh, kind of blending shears that are, I don't know the name of them. Anyway, they're special shears that you can use to make it so you're not just getting a blunt cut straight across. And so she just wanted a light trim on her hair, and that was easy enough to do. But it's when we start getting short hair and using clippers that it starts to get more, uh, more dangerous. All right, cream right down there in that middle spot. Okay. I also want to remember to do these sections here. 
My poor hubby, hubby doesn't have much left. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, see, my husband's Korean, so he's got that thick black hair. And so, honestly, like, haircuts are almost a necessity for him because otherwise his head just gets so hot. Okay, terracotta. And it's the same thing with my kids, because they've got that Korean thickness to their hair. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Where'd it go? Will we get our handy dandy eraser? Here we go. Just kept, oh, and there goes color numbers. <laughs> there we go. I did not mean that's That's going to be black. That was my bad. as well. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the light yellow okra. 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 Is it okra? No. Okra is like O-K-R-A. Like the vegetable right now. This is okra. Ah. Okay then, Sherry. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So 183 light yellow okra. Funny thing is, though, it's, it's like because it's so hot down here and my son's hair is as thick as it is, like he goes outside for 20 minutes and that poor boy is just sweating. I'm thinking I'm just going to have to brave it and and just like because our hairstylist has reopened her office. But first of all, I'm not comfortable with going to do it. And second of all, she's not doing kids right now. Um, she's just doing adults, mostly because kids are, you know, all over the place and can't keep their hands to themselves. And as far as quarantine is go, kids are pretty much germ factories. Um, Naples yellow. So uh, she's not, she's starting with adults, you know, established patients. So it's not even an option to, not patients, sorry, clients. I'm thinking doctor's office. It's not really even an option to take him in. And I don't really want to anyway. But I'm thinking that, because we have a pair of clippers, that I may just brave it and uh, cream now and just you know do his hair myself but we'll see doesn't have to be much just a little trim you know nothing too fancy i might do it speaking of racers how's he got me a battery up in one huh that thing is a trip oh awesome sherry okra i know lousy i'm struggling i'm struggling today okay now before we go on our second layer for this we need to talk about our contrasting color so we could go with a blue because this is kind of an orangey color but the fact of the matter is we are using three yellows and if you take a look at your color wheel you have here see we have a lot of like yellow orange going on and so opposite of the color wheel is violet. All right, we could do a blue violet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our colors and we're gonna be choosing something in this range. We don't wanna go red violet. I don't wanna go straight blue, but something in the violet and blue violet range will work for this. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our color chart. And so blue violet, these are all gonna be more red violet. We're gonna want something it's closer to here. Let's see, what do we have? These are all gonna be more blue. This is too dark. I feel like this is a little too red. I'm thinking 137 maybe? This is a little bit more red violet, but that might work. Actually 136 isn't bad. It's just not quite dark enough. Let's try 137. Let's try 137. You just got rain here? Oh, I wish we had rain. Rain would be nice. Okay, 137. Fourth one. Here we go. Oh, go figure. Blue violet. Well, I guess I found what I was looking for, huh? <laughs> We're gonna go for violet or blue violet. And the, the color I chose was actually blue violet, so there you go. Now, this is a much darker color than your yellow, so you're gonna wanna go fairly light when you go in on this. All right. So let's cut our little piece of paper here for it. Boop. All right. So this is blue violet number 137. Okay. 
Okay, so these are the combinations we're using. Was a good paper to copy color pages? So, Jean, I used, if you type exclamation point paper, this is the paper I'm using. Now, it's very smooth. I really like it. I heard some people had some issues with wax buildup, but I really enjoy it. Um, I found that it holds up with, you know, even if you're doing a little bit of watercolor, it'll keep a little bit of there on it. So, um, I highly recommend it. I got it on Amazon. No, it's all right, Jean. Well, there's like all different kinds. Some people like paper with a little bit more texture. Some people like cold press. Some people like hot press. There's all different variations on them. Some people like white paper, tone paper, tan paper. There's loads of different combinations. Me, I like a nice thick cardstock that um, will hold up well with markers. And that was a big reason why this was a selling point for me because this paper holds up really well with the uh, Arteza art markers. Okay, so here is what we're going to do. We have our blue violet, all right? Now, when you are doing such a dark color over light colors, take it slow. Go lightly. You can always add more layers. It is Light layers are much more forgiving than if you just, boom, hit it with a hard layer of color. Actually, a mixed media paper or color pencil paper works for me. There you go. Okay, so here we go, all right? We're going to start with this blue violet. Okay, and I am just going to lightly... It's not showing up much, but like I said, when you're starting with such a dark color, go lightly. You can always add more, but it's a lot harder to take away what you've added once you've put it on there. Okay, we're using a blue violet, and you'll see that it's coming up kind of gray, and that's kind of how it works when you use a complementary color on top of one another. Now, don't get me wrong, if you are color, say I had a purple color down here, and I wanted to add a contrasting color for the shadow, I would not use yellow to, sh to shade it. And that is because yellow is so light, it's not even gonna show up on there. So if this is all purple instead, depending on the kind of, you know, I, we have a lot of warm tones here, so it makes sense to use a cool tone to shade it. Same thing as we used a cool tone um, to shade this one. So that's where you can simplify it, because obviously yellow isn't gonna work. So think more instead, okay, I just laid down a cool color, I wanna go ahead and shade this with a warm color. So depending on the kind of picture that you're doing, if you're using purple, you could use something like a brown, which is a nice warm color and also darker than the purple, or you could use something like a green. It is also a cool color, but it's a strong enough color that it may show over that. But my instinct is usually a brown, um, not always red, but for purples, I generally use a brown to shade with. Let's see, is that in focus? Oh, I'm so paranoid about this. <laughs> okay, so you can see that we're starting off nice and light, not real strong, and the nice light layers helps create that gradient on its own. So we're gonna finish up with this. We're also gonna use a little bit inside here where we laid down that terracotta. And then we're gonna go over on another layer with these four colors again. So generally I'll do first the layer, then the contrasting shadow, then the layer again, and then I add anything else I need afterwards. But that's sort of my formula that I use. Main colors, shadow, main colors. So at least two layers. And I generally don't plan my colors as I go along. I just look at it and be like, okay, this is, this is what I wanna use for it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and grab our terracotta again. You can press a little bit harder on this next layer. You're not really blending so much as you're toning down the gray a little bit, bringing a bit more of that red color back in. I mean, it's all light and it's all subtle anyway, but it works. Coloring by the seat of my pants? Exactly, Sherry, exactly. Bit. And if you end up going over your lines here a little bit, it's not a big deal because you're going to be using black on these sections anyway. So, 
All right, now we're going to off to make a ridiculously late supper. Sounds good, Patty. What are you making? All right, so 183. We had a whole chicken yesterday for Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, by the way, to all the mothers. Um, but we had a bunch left over, so I made a chicken sandwich for myself tonight. And that was pretty tasty. I always enjoy good leftover crock pot chicken. It's nice. Like, I just take the whole bird and, you know, clean out the, the stuff that comes with it. And then I put, like, I have near the beginning of all this quarantine, um, I got a bunch of onions and I chopped them up and then I froze the onions in the freezer. Although I double bag it because otherwise those onions make the freezer reek to high heaven. Um, anyway, and so I will dump in essentially a whole onion's worth in the bottom of the crock pot and then I'll put the chicken on top and just the whole chicken, and it fits in our crock pot perfectly. And then I'll add some garlic salt on top, some oregano and some thyme. And then, and this works, it's kind of fun if you are making gravy with it because it makes it almost kind of semi-sweet. Uh, I'll cut up apples and then put apple slices on top of the chicken and I'll let that cook and let it cook all day. It's great. And I'll usually make a gravy. If I have potatoes, I'll do like, you know, cooked potatoes or mashed potatoes or something. Throw in some biscuits, it's really good. Thanks, Angela. I had whole chicken the other day. Emily made myself homemade chicken soup for my birthday lunch. Oh, awesome, Lozzie. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and use Naples Yellow. Okay, then we're going to use our cream. All right, now I haven't really tried this with Faber Castells, but we're gonna give it a shot. I feel like this yellow might be just a smidge too bright, so I'm gonna take this white, see what this does. Usually I'd use like a Prismacolor white, but wax on oil tends to not work as well. Okay, so you can use a white to tone it down just a little bit if you feel like your yellow is just a little too bright. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna grab our black combination that we used earlier like so. Sounds like it's snack time for the kitties. All right, so these are the three blacks we're going to use again. Okay, starting with number 199, the black. Okay. all three colors in some of these spaces just because there's not as much space to work with. How many pencils you use kind of depends on how much space there is. <clears throat> Biscuit sounded weird until I remembered it meant something else in America. Ah, oh, right. Yes, Lazzy. Not cookies. Uh, biscuits says, I don't know, what do you call biscuits then, Lazzy? Rolls? But no, rolls and biscuits are two very different things. Like biscuits are generally like a thicker bread type that don't require yeast, but a roll is a bread roll that requires yeast. So what would you call a non-yeasted roll, I guess, Lazi? What what would you what would you call it? Cause see, yeah, we call biscuits cookies here. I don't know. Does cookie mean something different uh, in the UK also? Alright, now we're gonna use that cold gray six, number two thirty-five. I'm not going to use too much because we don't have a ton of space to go with here. I want a biscuit either. <laughs> I'll see. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I really love those cheddar biscuits from Red Lobster. Those ones that are soaked in cheese and butter and they're absolutely amazing. Well, they sell boxes of those and those are the biscuits my husband made yesterday. Scones? No, no, because scones are almost like a sweet. There's a little bit of sugar in scones. Is it a crumpet? A crumpet? Hmm. I feel like a crumpet's got a little bit more air to it, though. Biscuits are pretty heavy. Tea and crumpets. Tea and crumpets. Did you add noodles? I'm thinking I may make some and add noodles to it. Ooh, that'd be good. 
Yeah, now I'm curious what the uh, translations are. Yeah, because a scone, a scone has a little bit of sugar in it, and that's something, well, me, I generally eat with, like, butter and jam or something. I suppose you could do that with a biscuit. When we say cookies, it's usually just the big ones with chocolate chips in it. Biscuits are everything else. Okay, that's fair. Yes, and they make a gluten-free option of that. Red Lobster Biscuits. Yes, Shannon. Oh, my gosh, they're so good. In fact, do we have that still a half biscuit in the fridge? Uh, I believe so. Okay, chat. Would you like me to heat it up? Maybe. Yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> See, now I'm going to eat the other half biscuit here. Just now, now I'm like suddenly really hungry and I want the other cheddar biscuit. But yeah, there's like cheese in it and it's all cheddary. Because I mean, who's going to Red Lobster right now? Not me. He treats me well. <laughs> no, not crumpets. Okay, Lozzie. Well, those cheesy biscuits from Red Lobster. I know, right? They're so good. So good. I don't think we have an equivalent of your biscuits. Maybe dumplings? Maybe, but dumplings are a bit more... Okay, so there are a few different definitions I have for dumplings. There's dumplings as in Asian food, which is completely different. And then when we have like chicken and dumplings, that's almost a little bit, but like those are kind of dumplings that I put in the soup and then get, it gets cooked by the soup. Oh, okay. Sherry. Hi, hubby. The gluten-free option is awesome. Tastes like the others. Exactly. Their food otherwise is terrible. Yeah, it's not great. You know, it used to be pretty decent. I really enjoyed getting, um, it was like a crusted, you know, they had the uh, crust on top. It was, what kind of, it, was a, it was a white fish. See, I grew up a fisherman's daughter, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty picky, picky, pretty picky. Um, yeah, I guess it's, texture-wise, it's similar to scone. I feel like scones have just a tiny bit more sugar in them. I'm using black now, by the way. Um, but yeah, and I got like a rice pilaf, and I usually got broccoli or something like that. But yeah, the biscuits are really, it's kind of like when you go to Olive Garden. You go there for the breadsticks. Ah, dang it, now I want Olive Garden breadsticks. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Amazing how gluten-free food is getting so good. Finally, I know, right? Yeah, I've seen a lot of good options. Um, there was, so in my, in my son's younger class, the parents would bring stuff for the parties and whatnot. And there was a girl in the class who was, you know, gluten-free, nut-free, pretty much everything free. Uh, and so I had to do some research to come up with snacks because I wanted to make sure she was included. She had her special snack, but I always wanted to make something that she could eat too, because her eyes just lit up when she suddenly realized she could eat what all the other kids were eating. And so I ended up finding this really good um, gluten-free, I think it's by King Arthur, pancake mix. They weren't as good the next day because I had to make them the night before. They were best the night before, but they almost smelled a little maple-y. They were really good. We wouldn't eat scones with dinner. Yeah, so texture-wise, the biscuits are similar to scones, but they're not quite scones because scones are a little bit sweeter, if that makes sense. When I saw those, I was so worried but so excited because that's the one thing I really miss. <laughs> All right, let's see. Cold gray six, just a tiny bit. But it was an interesting experience because I made uh, gluten-free sugar cookies too, but she couldn't use, she couldn't have um, like any kind of nut flour, so almond flour wasn't an option. So I ended up using, I think, tapioca flour, I think is what it was. And that was interesting. The, the texture, like it threw me because it was like almost gritty. I said goo. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm reading and I'm reading fast, all right? It's not my fault if you didn't add a D. No, I'm kidding. I'm just saying texture-wise it's similar. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Maybe it's like damper. What's damper? The gluten-free biscuit pancake mix is yum. Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, and Shannon, hi. Shannon, I totally missed you. I'm like used to seeing your name, so when I saw it, I didn't think about it. Hello, Shannon, welcome. I really like the pancakes that I make. I always whisk my egg whites separately so they're super fluffy. And then I add cinnamon and vanilla and some nutmeg to it. And it always ends up super delish. <laughs> when you were talking about biscuits. All right. Well, hi, Shannon. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and grab our blue violet again. Okay. We're going to move this black out of the way. We are going to work a little bit more on this yellow part here. Biscuits are like McDonald's biscuit sausage with egg, not the McMuffin. 
Ah, okay, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, they have McDonald's over there, so that makes sense. Had Red Lobster deliver two weeks ago. Got the large sample pattern just like I do when I go in person. It was good, but I couldn't nuke it to make it hotter because I didn't want to make the seafood rubbery. That's fair. Yeah, they are heavier. <gasps> Yay! It might be a little hot. So. Look, Chad, it's half a leftover biscuit. It's the cheddar biscuit. It's so yummy. I will definitely be nibbling on that. Thank you, hubby. Oh, and Sherry says hi. You're welcome. <laughs> hi, mm. Sherry. You know what it is? It's the cheese and the butter. It's the cheese and the butter that does it. <laughs> All right, so blue violet. I put extra cheese. So hear that? He put extra cheese. That's what you call a good husband. Shannon was called to the chat by talk of food. Oh, we always end up devolving to talking to food here. <laughs> All right, a little bit of that. I've been around just fighting a headache, but when biscuits were mentioned, I had to start talking again. Oh, Shannon, I'm sorry you have a headache. I know how that goes. I've got my headaches pretty under control. I realize taking magnesium on a, da on a daily basis helps significantly. Apparently, a good majority of women are actually magnesium deficient. And so between that and going to the chiropractor, which I haven't done in a while, um, the magnesium has helped significantly. Wow, waiter service. I know, he's so nice. Damper is Aussie bush bread. Flour, salt, and water baked in a campfire. Oh, okay. He is a very good husband. <laughs> he does the dishes, chat. And the laundry. It's, it's got a diamond in a rough right here. All right. Um, let me take a look at my reference picture here because I want to see how the top part... Well, I really did take some artistic license with this, didn't I? Okay, so here's the deal. This area here is all going to be black. This here will be the yellow. Okay, so let's start with that. Is the method to blend polychrome with similar to pencils? Hi, Krabby Patty. Um, so Prismas are a very different. They're a waxy pencil. So with polychromos, you are most definitely going to want to do light layers. So, I mean, definitely practice, um, but polychromos do not blend in the same way that Prismacolors do because they are an oil-based pencil versus um, versus a wax-based pencil. So, um, they, they are pretty different, but blending-wise, as long as you're using light layers, you should be fine. Okay, so we're going to use our black now. Oh, yeah, allergies. It's been bad here. Like, my husband can't. It's funny, because we've been in quarantine, it's just almost if, like, he, uh, it's gotten worse because he hasn't been outside as much. Joe does dishes and laundry for 36 years now. Nice, Kenny. See, that's, that's a sign of a good husband. Find, find you one that has no issues doing dishes or laundry, and you'll know you're going to be good for a while. <laughs> All right, so we're using black first. Now, I don't want to do full black here because I want to be able to create a little bit of a highlight there. So we're going to take the black here, go around the edge a bit. I'll be making some of those biscuits tomorrow. Ooh, awesome. Okay, get some dark down here. It's in a box from Walmart. <laughs> okay, I'm totally munching on these biscuits right now. Well, half a biscuit. We should make more biscuits next time. It's just so good. That's one thing Paula Deen's got going for her. More butter. More butter the better, I tell you. So I had a year... Um, so the kids' birthdays are right around the same time. So we throw one just massive giant birthday party. And um, the cupcakes that I was making, I never saw them. Oh, <laughs> how funny. I wonder if you could find them online. That could maybe be a thing. So anyway, we usually throw just these massive parties. Like I'm talking there's 25 to 30 kids there. We do them outside, kind of at a playground kind of thing. And uh, I'm using cold gray sticks now. And, you know, I, I'm actually pretty proud of how cost-effectively I can do their birthday parties. You know, I make the food, and I make the cupcakes and everything like that. 
And so this one year I was making yellow cupcakes with chocolate frosting, which actually turned out good. But here's the problem. So I was like tripling or quadrupling the recipe or something like that. Anyway, long story short, I ended up adding double the butter. Total accident. I, I just misread it or something. I forget what, I, what happened, but I ended up adding double the butter. And I was talking to my sisters and I'm just like, oh man, I'm gonna have to scrap the whole thing, make cupcakes all over again, get new cupcake wrappers, all this stuff, because I used up all these ingredients. And they're like, you know what, just leave it. Because I gotta tell you, those cupcakes were so good because they had so much butter and they were so moist and everybody absolutely loved them. So lesson learned from that, more butter. More butter is always better. <laughs> That was very helpful as well. We just had our 30th anniversary a couple weeks ago. Well, congratulations, Jean. We just had our 10 year anniversary in March. No, 10, 11, uh oh, uh oh, 11, 11 years. <laughs> but that's amazing, 30 is great. About to get a set of Pelicromos, so I was researching them. Definitely, you know, and Dick Blick will sell individuals. So what you could do is get like, you know, two or three of your favorite colors and try blending with them first before you invest in a larger set to see if you like them. They haven't been out that long, but they're yummy. Taste just like them. Awesome. Hi, Patricia. Yeah, those, those cupcakes were super moist and super rich. And oh my gosh, they were so buttery. But they were so good. Not for your waistline, though, I know. Well, see, the way it is is that most of the kids eat the cupcakes. And truth be told, a lot of the parents don't end up eating, you know, a ton of sugar because most of us are like, oh, no thanks and everything. So I figured, look at me, I should be coloring in the rest of this. I figured one cupcake, you know, because they weren't going to have seconds. One double butter cupcake wasn't going to hurt them. <laughs> but I told, uh, I told my friends that were there later, and they're like, well, they were great. I love them. I'm like, okay. 37 year anniversary in August? That's amazing, Kenny. Oh my gosh. Why are these biscuits so good? No, wait. I already answered that. It's the butter. <laughs> okay. I'm using that black. And like these were from yesterday and they're reheated and it's still pretty good. Okay, Lazi, in case you heard that beep, I'm just telling you now. That was the printer, okay? It was not the microwave. We used the microwave to heat up the biscuit. <laughs> 31 years, oh, that's amazing. 33 anniversary, oh, this is amazing. I love hearing how long everybody's been married. Okay, uh, let's see, cold gray six. Gives me hope for the future. It's too many divorces. My parents have been married for 30 some odd years. I know they've had their 30th, I just don't remember exactly when. Okay. All right, and we'll go ahead and use the cold gray three. There we go. Now what I am gonna do Celebrated my 12th anniversary in April. Oh, congratulations, Angela. That's amazing. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our cold gray uh, six again. Not the black, but the cold gray. I want to create just a little bit of a darker line up here on the top. There we go. All right. Oop, covering that up. All right. Now let's go ahead and grab our yellow combination here. I was married for 20 years and go, oh, <laughs> that works, Kelly, that works. No, not the microwave. <laughs> okay, so now we have our terracotta. True, true story. there. 
And then, let's see, 183. And then, let's see, then we've got 185, the Naples yellow. Okay, so a little bit there, and then the cream. Oh, goodness, Kelly. <laughs> well, he sounds like a bit of a turkey. All right, cream, and it sounds like you are all the better for your new situation. All right. Now blue violet. A little bit here. A little bit here. I'm not gonna use too much because we're right next to the black. Welcome, Dominique. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome to our coloring family. Okay. A little bit there. Now we're gonna grab that terracotta again so she can have them. <laughs> Let's see. I've uh, been married for 39 years, together for six prior to that. My secret, moved my husband out eight years ago to Cali from Tennessee to live with his girlfriend. We get along better than ever. Oh, goodness, Diane. <laughs> I cannot live without my migraine. Sherry, I'm right there with you. Sometimes you have to. This is my second marriage. I'm definitely thankful I got her. You know, sometimes it's, you know, it takes a couple times. And, you know, when you know you find that right person, it just makes it so much more worth it. This class are for men. Reacher says men, men cannot be alone and don't want to be alone. <laughs> It was hard being married to Marie, never again. Oh, I couldn't do that. So my husband, you know, does uh, archaeology, and he occasionally has to go on digs. And when I was pregnant with my son, my daughter was pretty young, and he had to go on. He was gone for overseas uh, eight weeks, I think it was, or six weeks. It was a really long trip. And that's like nothing compared to what military wives have to do. And I'm just like, I could not be a military wife. I just, I couldn't do it. It's too long. Brian got it right the second time. That's good. <laughs> All right. So I'm thinking we'll probably use a gold gel pen for this little small bit here. Hmm. All right. Now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to, we used, we used that Helio on here, but I feel like actually, because we've got this black up here, I want to bring in some of this black to um, this little thoraxy area. So, you're all invited to the wedding when I marry myself. Done, Lazzie, done. Oh, I used a capital E. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this cold gray six and I wanna add in a little bit of that to here. And the reason I am doing a black versus a contrasting color is because we have so much black on this already. So I want to make sure and bring that kind of full circle here. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit up on the top here. Create almost a little bit of a drop shadow on that top ridge. Here we go. Cats are like wrestling in the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Hi, Annie. Welcome. Annie, Bobani, Banana, Fanny, Bobani, me, my Mobani, Annie. <laughs> if anybody's curious, it's because my cat's name is Annie and I do that to my cat. And so it's just sort of become a thing. There we go. Bring a little bit of that black on in. All right, let's zoom on out. We've got quite a bit done here. And we may end up bringing a little bit just because it's so, I mean, I know in the picture it's very stark, you know, kind of red and yellow, but I feel like I want to bring in a little bit more of this reddish orange up here before we continue. But it is 1029, so I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here because now I've had that biscuit. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> All right, 
A replica TARDIS in his garden? Oh my gosh, Lossie. I want it. I want it. I want it. I have a pup named Annie. My granny's name was Annie. Oh, that's amazing. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun. We got a lot done. It's, it's kind of fun coloring my own stuff sometimes, too. So um, for anybody that has is newly arrived, if you would like to color this page, you can type exclamation point Etsy in chat. And that will take you to my Etsy store where you can purchase this drawing. But also, um, just as a reminder for everybody, our hollow octopus, uh, hollow octopus stickers are now in the Etsy store. And I have a special running right now that if you uh, purchase at least two of any of the stickers, whether it's two of the same kind or two of a different kind, these are all the stickers that we have in the store, um, this little uh, microwave teacup will be included uh, as a freebie. So anyway, check out the Etsy store. Check everything out if you, if you like. And um, we'll leave it for here. We should be live again. What is today? I don't even know what today is. Today Monday? What is today? Yes, today is Monday. We will be live again on Wednesday evening, okay? And we will continue working on our friendly little uh, yellow jacket here, all right? So thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I will see you Wednesday. Thank you to our subscribers and our new member. And I will... Sounds good, Diane. And I will see you all on Wednesday, okay? Everybody take care, stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you then. Bye.